below. This is a build video. We're gonna be building things because it's a build video. But yeah, I've been watching Boba Fett. Some people have been hating on it. Okay, I get the plot slow. It's more of a nostalgia, kind of his backstory kind of thing. But I've liked it so far and I've been watching it. And of course, when I see his armor, the first thing I think of is, wow, I need to make that. So we're gonna be making his helmet with a motorized rangefinder. Anyway, also something I wanted to mention that maybe only two of you will be interested in. I made shirts solely for the meme, okay? And they say, proud 3D printer mom. And obviously we have some that say, proud 3D printer dad. And I thought of this cause you know, I got married about a year ago. And of course, when you get married, even though you're only 23 years old, everyone already starts to ask you, hey, when are you having kids? And I'm like, excuse me, my printers are my kids. Are you kidding me? They make weird noises. I'm constantly having to check on them. Sometimes they goof up. I, I could go on. So um yeah, that, that's the origin of this. If you're interested, the link to this will be down in the description for the two of you that are interested. All right, back to the build. So for printing files, I decided to go with Vec 3Ds. His information will also be in the description. You should definitely go check him out. Very talented modeler. And spoiler alert, I uh, already printed the helmet and it turned out great printed it out of polymakers poly polymakers polylight pla pro also printed all the smaller parts to it vec models all the ears and other pieces separately so everything is actually already printed okay you don't get to see that part big whoop i did not use supports for the inner part of the dome but use supports for the forehead part of the visor and it turned out great i also got one of my buddies walsh he had a template for it to just go ahead and poke a hole for a servo for the rangefinder. So we are ready to go, ready to start sanding this thing. We're going to sand down the raw plastic, hit it with some filler primer and just sand it till it's smooth basically. While it's drying, we're gonna check out the motorization part. All right, so I'm getting ready to sand outside um, and I have a couple ideas of what I wanna do with the... Well, what are the white stuff? This is South Carolina. What is the... But the it's cold, bro. What? This is South Carolina. I don't. I don't know what the all this white stuff outside is. Let's go work on the electronics instead, I guess. Okay, so we've got all the programmable stuff working. We just have a micro servo. Whenever I press a button, it'll swing 90 degrees and a light will turn on. And that light is something that I'm gonna mount inside the rangefinder. I'm gonna try to get a plate of acrylic with like maybe a target kind of like engraved in there with a Dremel. And the plan is to try to light it up with that red LED. It's pink right now, but I'll switch it out. And as far as power goes, I'll probably just use say a four AA battery pack. I could use a portable USB charger, but I do not have one at the moment. So battery pack's gonna have to do. All right, raw plastic is sanded. Now I'm gonna hit it with Duplicolor filler primer. This specific type is called red oxide filler primer. And if you use spot putty for any dents or anything, it's basically a sprayable version of that, but it's probably the best filler primer I've used so far. Alrighty, hello, this is Emily from the future. Because I decided to do so many time lapses, there was just going to be no talking whatsoever. So, you know, that was a great idea. But anyway, this is what this filler primer looks like after it's sprayed on. And uh, here's me being freezing because there was still snow on the ground outside, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. After the filler primer was dry, I took my mouse sander and sanded it down with a lower grit sandpaper and then moved on to higher grit hand sanding it. And then I took the spot putty, the stuff I was talking about earlier, if you're unfamiliar, and was able to cover any gaps or holes. And this is what it looks like after it's all sanded down and nice and pretty. And then after that, I can just hit it with another coat of filler primer and it's pretty much ready to be painted. All right, back to lame in person me. All right, I'm aware. I don't look great right now. I've been outside sanding, it's fine. So while we're waiting on that to dry, I thought I'd show you my plan for painting it. So these were the greens that I used for my grapple shot. And this one is too dark and this one is too light. So I ended up buying another green. The store was entirely out of spray paint, so that's great. Uh, but I found that one and it looks a little lighter than it actually does on video right now. I'm hoping this green works. If not, I'm probably gonna try to darken it up with this one. For the border around his visor, I've got this kind of clay looking reddish color. That should work just fine. Something else I was kind of surprised to find, the earpieces are not silver. For some reason in my head, I had them as silver. Um, they're more of a champagne like color, which I don't really have. I have silver and I have gold. So again, might try to kind of mix something together there. We'll see. This is Duplicolor and these are Krylon and these are Rust-Oleum. So we will be mixing brands here. So we're going to have to test a couple of things out and just, uh, we'll have to be careful. 
Okay, I'm back. So for the earpieces, I actually did a base coat of silver and then lightly dusted it with gold. And in the same way for the helmet, the green was too much of a green. So I took an army green, stood back and lightly dusted it to give it more of a matte finish. Okay, so while that's drying, next I wanna try to make the visor. For this, I'm gonna be using my buddy Frank's method of basically just tinting a piece of plastic. So I bought a bunch of these like really cheap plastic sheets on Amazon. And then I also bought some 5% window tint. So I'm gonna take this and apply it to the plastic sheet. The length of this is going to be just enough to cover the visor from end to end. I'm going to put you over here. I feel like every single time I paint something and I get like the perfect finish that I want, something happens where I drop it, my hair gets in it. Something happens to where it's it's not perfect anymore. So I am going to be careful. All right, something else I'm doing with this plastic sheet um, is I'm actually making a tiny little target screen for the rangefinder. I don't really know what else to call it. This is the painted rangefinder and it has a place for a screen right there. And so what I did was I kind of etched in a target or something. I just used a box cutter to etch it in. And I'm gonna put an LED on the edge of this thing and shine it into this piece of plastic. Hopefully everything I etched in here will kind of light up and it'll make it look like a targeting system thing. I don't really know. We'll see how it works. Okay, so I finally got this piece cut. I had to end up using like a hot knife to do it because every time I would actually cut it, it would just crack all the plastic everywhere. I went through like two of these sheets before I actually was able to get this. So now it's time to put our tent on there. I'm gonna cut out a piece. I've never done this before. This is probably gonna crash and burn to the ground, but it's it's fine. According to Mr. Built, we wanna have this pretty wet. I'm going to try my darnest to keep it flat. I definitely suffered while doing this. Uh, I, I make it look easy with time-lapse things, but just so you know, I just sitting there squeegeeing water out for like an hour. But here's something a little cooler. Honestly, one of my favorite parts of the entire process is taking off the masking tape. All right, you can take a quick little sneak peek. <laughs> that is clean looking. You know, like, wow. do I battle damage it or do I just leave it? Cause it kind of looks clean the way it is. Okay, so I did an Instagram poll asking everyone what I should do and 60% of people are saying to battle damage it, so I might do a little bit. I'm not gonna go overboard with it, but I'll add a few scratches. I'm just gonna take a rough brush and some silver acrylic paint and then some gray acrylic paint. And uh, that's, that's pretty much all I do. Okay, so I was finally able to get the visor done. Now, the helmet's been battle damaged and everything, and I'm in the process of wiring it together, soldering it together. And it's been a little bit difficult because I'm having to solder pieces after it's installed in the helmet. Because for example, here's the rangefinder stem and I wouldn't be able to fit the LED through the stem. So I'm having to push wires up through it and then solder it on the end. So we have all our pieces here and I believe we are about ready finish them up. I was trying to figure out where to put the button as well. I kind of wanted to be able to like press the ear somehow. So we're going to mount it kind of on the bottom diagonal piece near the ear. So you can kind of reach up and press your thumb up against it. So I hollowed some space down of this ear piece and I'm going to kind of place the button right there. So now if I plug it in, just give it power real quick. I've yet to mount these completely yet. Um, we'll probably have to play around with some of the angles cause this needs to go down just a wee bit more, but that is exactly what we want. It looks like it's struggling a little bit. So when I put it down, obviously the weight of this thing just like chucks it down here. You've got the LED picking it back up is a little difficult. The servo has enough power to pull it up from that angle. But say if I'm looking down right here, just doesn't have enough kick to it. Okay, after looking at it some more, it literally only takes like the tiniest push to get it back up. And when I mean the tiniest push, I mean like that. Honestly, all it needs is a little bit of tension. What I think I'm gonna do is just use like a tiny little rubber band. If I can place it around, the range finder, press the button. Of course it goes down pretty easily and say, hook it around a screw right there. It works just fine. So I think I'm gonna go grab my drill. As janky as this is, it's gonna be covered by this. So that's what we're gonna do. So 
So let me show you what's inside this. Or on the outside over here, we have a button. I literally just ended up like using a soldering iron just to melt through the plastic. And that's the hole for the servo. Everything's hooked up to a Nano. And then I just have a battery pack that I'm gonna Velcro inside. So yes, the servo does stick out a little bit here, but when I put padding around it, the padding is probably gonna come up to that servo. So it really shouldn't make a difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and Velcro up some of this stuff in here, and then we're gonna pad it. Okay, it's done. It's finally done. Fun fact, when I tried to put the visor in there after I was done installing all the padding and everything, your girl shattered it as were my dreams. So I had to make another visor. That was a lot of work, but it's done. It's all together. Let me show you real quick. The inside looks like this. It has a bunch of padding. I fold back this padding find the battery pack, hit the on switch. I can tuck that back. Amar, she is, look at it. I'm actually pretty happy with the battle damage. I think this is only the second time in my life I've attempted to do battle damage and I didn't want to overdo it because um, I wanted it to look somewhat new, but um, it works. And yeah, my husband's about to get home from the grocery store. So um, I'm, I'm going to surprise him with this. That's what I look like. Um, so bad he's got groceries in there. He's probably gonna be like trying to get the groceries out of the car. My dumb self is standing inside here with a Boba Fett helmet on. Oh, hey, good looking. I'm not your bounty, am I? <laughs> or else I gotta get out of here. Boom, 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 it might be boom, too boom, small. Boom, boom, boom. It might be too small. <laughs> Your chin is peeking on the bottom. It's the Mando theme. Oops. Right there. Hey! <laughs> I feel so bad. I put the battery pack up top and uh... So now your eyes are probably more like right there than right there, but... Rocket! I guess I gotta make a rocket next now. Alright. All right, so that kind of concludes this build. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, I have to admit. I paid a lot more attention to how much I sanded the raw plastic this time and ended up getting a much cleaner surface to work with. Ended up mixing some paints a little bit, but it all worked out. Normally I do that and at least one of them just starts orange peeling or something happens because, you know, it hates me. But paints mixed well, um, battle damage turned out pretty good. The only thing that really was a pain in the rear end for me was the visor. I don't know if I expressed it enough throughout this video, but it shattered on me the first time. I had already gone through several sheets of this plastic. This was my last one, believe it or not. Was able to tint it and get it in there and I literally just realized like 30 minutes ago, it already cracked again. And we heat formed this one. This, this one I took a heat gun to, so you know, I don't know. In reality, I think um, I used a plastic that was a little too thick for this project. It's like a millimeter thick and I should have gotten a lot more of a like flimsy material, I think. So I probably just didn't choose the right plastic for the job. So who knows, maybe I'll try again or I'll just not ever want to touch it again and just order a visor off of T-Visors or something like that. I don't know. But everything else turned out pretty well. Something else I wanted to show you a little bit more of uh, was this little part of the range finder right here. I feel like I didn't actually get to show it on camera. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I don't know if you can see that target that I etched into that plate, um, but the LED is underneath this little scrap of foam. Just had to cover it with something, right? But that's what it looks like. Some of the super glue got smeared a little bit along this edge but sure it's battle damage everything's battle damage now <laughs> i'm happy with it it's fine something else before i do end this video this video is sponsored by skillshare so here's a quick word about them and what they do this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn pretty much any new skill or hobby that you have in mind. So many of you are always asking how they can learn to 3D model or say what my 3D printing settings are. Well, Skillshare is perfect for learning new things just like that. Here's an example of a class that teaches you how to 3D model a bust of Darth Vader from start to finish in Blender. Skillshare has so many lessons to offer from things like 3D modeling to other things like editing, music, animation, photography, and just so much more. If anything like that has ever sparked your interest but you don't really 
really know where to start, Skillshare is bound to have classes to get you going in the right direction. New classes are launched every week, so there's always something new to try. So if you are interested in joining, be sure to head over to the link in the description. And in fact, the first 1,000 people to click that link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So definitely be sure to go check that out if you're interested and thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, if you stayed to the end of the video, congratulations, you're special, you get a gold star. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. If you are not subscribed, if you have come to my channel from probably that one YouTube short that's like at 20 million views, that's honestly been hauling the entire growth of my channel, then hello, welcome. Feel free to subscribe if you like what you see. I'm a nerd. Woo. I did want to also mention though, one of my New Year's resolutions for this year is to really focus on Patreon and I'm super excited about it. So I wanted to let you guys know about it. The link to my Patreon is in the description if you'd like to join. With that being said, I do want to thank my master patrons. I appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you so much for sticking with me. So yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.